Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money. All in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can even earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Spotify for Podcasters has made our podcasting process so much easier and even has options like Q&As and polls so we can engage with listeners. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. The following contains descriptions of physical violence, sexual violence, and graphic descriptions of autopsies. Hey listeners, welcome to episode 28 of TGIC Podcast. I'm Jillian. And I'm Izzy. Also known as Lindsay Lohan for today's episode because something's wrong with her voice. Yeah, I literally... Guys, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. This has happened like four times in the She's past She's like month. not sick or anything. It just no, happened. like it literally happened like ten minutes ago and now... Yeah. Which is also funny because we like talk about how she looks like Lindsay Lohan in Freaky Friday like all the time. And now I sound like Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of like the mom from Freaky Friday, and you're kind of like the daughter. You kind of are. I feel like that's actually really accurate. <laughs> that's, like, such a good description of our friendship. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, um, today we'll be covering the disappearance of Dorothy Fornstein. Uh, this was actually a fan-requested case. A few weeks ago, we got a message on our blog, which you can totally do. Someone better do this, because I really appreciate no. getting this. I'm, like, sitting in school checking my email, and I had a message from a fan... And I was so happy. Anyway, um, our fan named Adriana, she requested this case, so I'm just going to read her a little note real quick because it was just so sweet. Um, Hi, Izzy and Jillian. I love your podcast so much. I listen to it everywhere and love listening to you guys mispronouncing words. I got in a friendly argument with my friend about episode 20, The Elevator Game. I honestly think that the supernatural theory and the cover-up is most likely. I recommend that you do the disappearance of Dorothy Fornstein. I hope you continue the podcast and have a great school year. Bye. So that's, like, so sweet. So thank you for sending that in, Adriana. Yeah, like, honestly, that we love getting stuff like that. Like, that literally makes this so worth it. And also, I am so glad the bye thing caught on. Is he used to do that as, like, a, like, social anxiety thing? Like, as, yeah. like we'd go to end the episode and you just go, bye! Like, no, I didn't know like, how to act. Like, I didn't know what to say. I felt like I needed to wrap it up. And then it kind of just caught on. And we kind of like it because I feel like it feels like you're, like, on the phone with a friend, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, like wrapping up a conversation. And we say bye. And then Izzy did it for a while. Now I've kind of just started doing it because I like it, too. And it's, like, our, it's like our thing now. But, like, I can't believe that actually caught on. No, I literally, I don't. I thought no one noticed. No, I literally thought nobody noticed that. Or, like, it was just there like it was just something we did and I was like trying to figure out something that we could do that I feel like other content creators do you know what I mean that's yeah like, that. like a trademark even though it's just the word bye yeah <laughs> but that is our trademark and I love getting messages from you guys it's so sweet and like it kind of reminds me sometimes that people actually listen to me talk which yeah, is like no, weird. It's weird sometimes I have like an existential crisis where I realize that people are like listening to me talk like once a week and like honestly sometimes we dish out some stuff that we, like, we should not be a little bit um and like so many of you guys listen to us and listen to us every week and we're just like so thankful we so appreciate it oh my god we do overshare too much literally you guys have asked for bloopers before like i know on our bonus content poll some people were asking for bloopers and like here's the truth <laughs> we don't cut out a lot and the shit that we do cut out it's because it needs we like to be cut out it's because we like name drop teachers and kids that go to our school <laughs> and that's not appropriate no it's yeah like that's literally why we can't have it. That's our only bloopers. You guys hear everything else. So we'll we'll try to conserve some bloopers, maybe bleep out some, some names. Bloopers? Some bloopers. No, I'm the one with the weird voice. <laughs> um, no, but we'll try to find something, but usually it's because we're name dropping people. Oh, yeah. Because we have issues with oversharing. This is what happens or when we only like, have, like, one friend. No, literally. <laughs> or it's like, or it's like we'll be talking about something, and then it just escalates really quickly, and then or one of us says something really embarrassing, and one of us starts laughing really ugly. It's just, it's, it's not, like... 
It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> it's not quality content. But, you know, if you guys really want the bloopers, we'll see what we can do. We'll see if we can scrounge some stuff up. Yeah, anyway, guys, send us messages. We love it. Just, you know, do it if you're, if you're ever bored. <laughs> Honestly, just say hi. Just say hey. We appreciate it. Literally, I've talked with a few of you guys on Instagram before, and I, I love those conversations. They're honest, they're just really nice. They're really nice. We we feel appreciated. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the case now because we just spent a good five minutes blabbering about nothing. Um, that's what we do. That's, that's what, what we, do, we do. That's what we do best. Okay, so Dorothy Dora Forenstein. Or why do I keep saying Foren? I can't. It's even, forced. It's Forenstein, but I can't say it without like adding like an, an S- N, N, like a N sound. Dorothy Dora Forenstein was born in 1909. And there's not really, like, a date for her birthday. I guess that was just, like, a really long time ago. I don't oh, know. yeah. Like, I noticed during this case specifically, there's not a lot of specifics. Yeah. Like, you don't have times like you usually do. You mainly have, like, flat-out dates. Yeah, and, like, the, like her birthday is not even official. It's just a year. But, like, I think that's just how it worked. There was not a lot of, like, or the records just were not preserved well, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Um, anyway, Dorothy was married to Jules Forstein, who was a magistrate judge, and that's just like a, you know, like a smaller court judge, I think. I, I, I should really know what the definition of a magistrate court is, but like, it's just... It's, no, like, we're literally in a bush and we're in mock trial, and we don't know what a freaking magistrate is. We also have a true crime podcast, like, I really feel like, I want to be a freaking lawyer, and I couldn't tell you what that is. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's like a smaller court. It's not like a big, big one, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Very descriptive. Yeah, I'm, I'm really good with the descriptions today. <laughs> anyway, they were super happily married, and they were actually childhood sweethearts, Aww. which is so cute. Like, I guess they were like, they went to elementary school together or something, but they used oh to like, God. you know, like when you have like a, you have your boyfriend in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was kind of cute. Um, they have three children, and the f- older two, were, their names were Myrna and Marcy, and they were actually Jules' kids from his first marriage, but uh, Dorothy was just a really strong mother figure to them, and then mm-hmm. they also had a baby named Edward. <gasps> what? When was he born? Was oh. he born in 1917? Is that like a Twilight reference? Yeah. Oh. Oh, no, actually, Edward died in 1917. Oh, Jesus. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, also, if he was born in 1917, that would make him like eight. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Izzy just likes to talk about Twilight. Uh, yeah. Insert that wherever it's necessary. <laughs> um, there was no ex-wife in the picture. I know that's probably something you guys were all thinking, because that's, like, what I was thinking. Yeah, that's where your mind goes. Yeah, and but she actually passed away giving birth to Myrna, which is super sad. But yeah. then after that, Jules got remarried, so I guess everything, you know, yeah, it, it, it worked really, out for him. It's good that he married Dorothy, who seems like a very nice woman, who he knew before, too. Yeah. Uh, the family lived in a three-story brick home in Philadelphia. Okay, so I'm going to get into the timeline. Also, my voice is getting progressively worse, so sorry about that. Anyway, January 25th of 1945. Let me say, due to the fact that this case happened, like, so, so long ago, we don't have exact times, but, like, I'm going to recount the series of events. Your voice is, like, killing me. No, it's so bad. I'm is so it, like, hurt to sorry. Talk? No. Uh, like, <laughs> it's starting to get better. Just like, I don't know. Like, like, it's raspy. I don't know what's going on. My voice doesn't even get like this when I'm sick. And I literally get strep throat like four times a year. Okay. Is he's that kid? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm that kid. Anyway, Dorothy left her house and her children with her neighbors to run some errands. And I assume she probably left after lunch, like about one or two. And there are actually like multiple reports that she was seen talking and joking with her local butch, butch, butcher, butcher, butcher. and some of her other friends that she lived near. And like at this point, she's just acting super normal and like nothing, as if like nothing's wrong. As, like, nothing's truly alarmed her. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of important to mention, because we'll get into that a little bit later. But later that evening, when Dorothy had returned to her home, there was actually a man following her without her knowledge. And that's what I was going to say. Like, it didn't seem like she knew anything earlier. And this is actually known due to the fact that her neighbor, Maria Townley, saw the perpetrator and alerted the police that night after the following incident. So when Dorothy, like, opened her door and went to enter her house, the man attacked her and started beating her with his fists and an unknown blunt object. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
And I mean, this attack ended like ended up knocking her unconscious. And when she fell in her hallway, it unhinged the telephone that was on her wall. And to preface this, in the 1940s, there was a live operator on the other end who would like put you through to whatever house slash address that you wanted to call. So like when she fell and knocked the phone off the wall, it like. I don't know, like, summoned the operator, and when the operator, like, heard all the commotion, they ended up calling the police. Oh my god, that's, like, so awesome and, like, coincidental. And, I like, know! Everything. Like, that's actually really cool. I don't know how to, like, explain that that's, like, such a chance thing. No, it literally is. Like, and the fact that, like, I feel like a lot of people would just be like, oh, that's kind of weird, and then, like, hang, hang it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not do anything, but that probably saved Dorothy's life. And also, it's, like, a time period thing, like, they don't have telephone operators anymore. Like yeah, exactly. Now, if, like, the phone wouldn't even, even, like, dialed or anything. Yeah. And so, like, when the police arrived, she was taken to the hospital. And honestly, like, due to her extensive injuries, they were not sure if she would make it. And also, let me say that the unknown attacker apparently, like, fled a bloody, unconscious Dorothy in her house when he heard the sirens from the police. Oh, my God. So, like, he could have taken it so much farther if the police wouldn't have shown up. Mm-hmm. And, like, when she got to the hospital, they discovered that she had a broken jaw, a shattered nose, a fractured soldier, shoulder, not soldier, soldier <laughs> and, like, brain injuries. Oh, my God. And, like, at the time, there wasn't, like, advanced medicine, like, or as advanced as it is today. Yeah. And they thought there was, like, a large possibility that she wouldn't recover. That's nuts. And I mean, like, but when she did make a recovery, like, the only thing that she could get out was that she had no idea who the attacker was, and that, quote, he just hit me and hit me. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, I mean, the weeks and months following the attack, she had supposedly shifted into, like, a whole other woman. Many people said that she was no longer as happy and carefree as she had been her entire life. And instead, she was constantly afraid and anxious of people, like, lurking in the shadows and, look like... That's so sad. Which is horrible. And, I mean, like, in the 1940s, this was probably unexplainable, and everyone was just like, oh, she's acting so weird. But in truth, she was most likely suffering from, like, severe trauma and mental health issues from the attack. Like, PTSD, and I'm sure, like, some sort of anxiety. And, I mean, years later, five five years years later. later... October 18th of 1949, Jules had plans to attend, like, a political banquet for his work. I'm so sorry. My, like, pronunciation, my freaking voice, I don't know what's going on. Anyways, which entailed that he would be, like, leaving his wife and children home, which he seldom did following, like, Dorothy's attack. And before he went to the banquet from work, he called Dorothy to ensure her that he, like, to ensure that she was okay and to reassure her that, like, he would be home around 11. And the weird thing was, they had, like, a brief conversation, and then right before he was about to hang up, she said, quote, be sure to miss me. That's, like... Just before he hung up. That's my... Okay. I don't know if that's weird or not. It really depends on, like, a personality. Yeah, it depends on the personality. Like, like, if I hung up with you on the phone, be sure to miss me. That's That's so weird. weird. Like, I wouldn't say that to my parents. I wouldn't say that to you. Like, that's a weird thing to say. But, like, also, maybe that was normal for her. Maybe it was normal speak for the 40s. I don't know. Like, I literally have no idea. I just thought it was kind of... We can go consult Mm -hmm. our A-push teacher to see if that's what people said in the 40s. If that was, like, common. I don't know. I'm so sad that A-push is ending. No, same. Like, I keep thinking about it because we reference A-push all the time. Yeah, I love A-Push, and I love my A-Push teacher. Yeah, he's he's amazing. And, like, literally, we used to have, like, four hours of A-Push homework every week, and now we don't have any. No, I feel because, like, so the AP pointless. exam is next week, and, like, we're done with our last test. Like, I don't know what to do anymore. I literally had nothing to do yesterday. I felt so unproductive. I'm, like, suffering without the A-Push <laughs> no, homework. No, same. Like, I feel so lazy. <laughs> Anyways... When Jules, like, I'm assuming he had a normal banquet or whatever, but when he got home around 11.30, he was, like, super shocked to come into his apartment because his two children were huddled together in the hallway, screaming and crying. Oh, my God. And, I mean, like, that's weird as it is, but when he walked around the house, he realized that the reason that the kids were crying was because their mom literally was nowhere to be found in the house. Oh, my God. And also, let me say, his other daughter was at, like, a sleepover at a friend's house, so that's why she wasn't there. Yeah. 
Um, and like, I mean, obviously he tried to rationalize the absence of his wife by assuming that she was at a friend's or a neighbor's house. And like, after he called around for multiple hours, he realized she was truly missing and he called the police. And I mean, the thing was, there was nothing to go off of. Like, it was like she, like, disappeared into thin air. Mm -hmm. However, the only lead that ever came from the case, like, like years and years later, is that Marcy Forstein, who was only nine at the time, she told the main police officer on the case that she had been awoken by a noise coming from downstairs. So she got out of bed and went into the hallway, and she saw a random, like, random dude walking up the stairs. Ugh. Yeah. And, I mean, she said that, like, she walked down the stairs, and her mom was face down on the rug, and that she looked as if she was, like, sick. And, I mean, since this girl's so young, like, I don't know what she probably actually looked like. Maybe she just looked, like, bad. I don't uh-huh. know. Yeah. But Marcy claims that the man was wearing all brown... And that there was something, like, sticking out of his pocket. All brown, like, poo? Yeah, like, like poo why? man. Okay, that's, like, weird, though. Like, do, don't cri- like, like no, criminals wear, black. like, all black. All brown. Was he literally dressed up as, like, a giant duty? Oh, my God, do you know that episode of Friends when Ross dresses up as that space potato Spudnik? thing? Spudnik? Yeah, and then <laughs> Joey's, like, Ross came as duty. <laughs> I have the humor of like a child sometimes. But yes, I do remember. That. <laughs> he came and kidnapped her, dressed like a poo. Yeah, he was literally dressed like a poo. <laughs> but he like apparently, when Marcy was standing there, he picked up her mother like with ease and walked over to Marcy. Okay, caution, this is really creepy. He patted her on the head and said, "Go back to sleep, little one." Your mommy has been sick, but she will be all right now. And then he carried Dorothy out of the house, and she has never been seen again. And that is why little kids should be trained in karate. Literally. Like, I regret not doing karate as a child. I almost did karate. My dad wanted me to be able to kill someone with my fists. Yeah, no, my dad wants me to be trained in, like, street fighting. Yeah, I mean, I would freaking love that. I would definitely buy with that. that. Like self defense classes. Oh my god, that'd be so teach cool. You, I see self defense. <laughs> we could like, like do a Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> that that a special so, event. That'd be so embarrassing. I feel like <laughs> if we did that, like we would get bullied. We would be like internet harassed. You know we're probably bullied now. We're just not big enough to be internet harassed. True. Do you know there's probably people at our school who listen and then make fun of us? <laughs> like. Literally. That's so... Oh, my God. I never even thought about that, no, but people well, probably do that. Like, But, like, think about it. Like, when we see people as, like, like TikToks and, like, YouTube videos and shit, like, we make fun of that shit all the time. <laughs> well, like, when I sit there and make fun of them. And do you think... Like, I'm sure someone is listening right now and, like, they're making fun of us. I would make fun of us. I mean, I would make fun of us. I would totally make fun of us if I weren't us. True. I, like, I, I'm not gonna lie. I would make I would fun definitely. of us if I was not me. Yeah, I mean, same. This is totally worth making fun of. Yeah. Yeah, we just also have real listeners, so in your face. Yeah. Cool. In your face. If you're <laughs> listening to this just to make fun of us, well... Thanks we, for the listens. Yeah, thanks for the listens. <laughs> you're helping our analytics. Helping our analytics, helping us bring in some little dough, eventually. We're, we're not making any money off of this. Eventually. Clarification. <laughs> but, you know... Anyway. Thanks. That was so creepy. I'm like still stuck. No, that, on that was really weird. That is like one of those things like, that would like scare how the shit he dressed her as little one. Yeah. That's like the other day when I was working, a guy and his kid came in, and he called his child sir. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, like, the entire time that they were in there, I have observed he was like, what so were you much, like, sir. <laughs> I've observed so much stuff about like how weird people are since I started working. No, yeah, literally. Is he gonna work in the same place? Like, how cool is that? That is really. Co- it's really cool. It's really fun. Like, we don't work together all the time, but when we do, we like we're so coordinated. Everyone else is like not on our not on our wavelength. Yeah, exactly. I don't even think people and get also, it. And also, like, like so much coworker tea. So much coworker tea. Like Izzy and I just needed some more people to talk about. <laughs> that's really that's very true. <laughs> okay, so let's get into suspects and theories a little bit. 
Our first suspect is Jules Forstein, her husband. So, like, for obvious reasons, Jules was looked into just because, like, he's the husband, but, like, there's no evidence against him. Yeah. And because he was at a work event when he disappeared, or when she disappeared, his, like, judge friends vouched for his alibi. So, I don't really know if I think he's suspicious. I don't, like, want to think so. They said they were, like, happily married or whatever. But, like, I feel like his alibi is either, like, super truthful, like, oh, yeah, Mm -hmm. all the judges substantiated it, or it's, like, super corrupted or whatever because, like, his judge friends supported it. Like, exactly, it's, like, both sides of the spectrum there. And I feel like you could make this, he could be potentially really shady or not by the timeline, too. But since we don't have those specifics, we don't know. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, you don't know when that first call he made was. You don't know. So, like, in reality, he could have gotten home at 1130, and since it was a few hours before he called the police, like, he could have been doing whatever and, like, disposing of Dorothy's body or whatever, Mm -hmm. and then calling the police or calling friends. But, like, we don't have that time. Exactly. And then, like... like, I don't want to think he's suspicious. I'm just saying, like, it's possible. It's possible. Like, I don't really think so. Like, they seem to be totally happily married, and it seems weird that he would, like, kidnap her while their kids were home and then come back later. Yeah, exactly. And Marcy, her thing. Like, her sighting. I don't feel like she would... That's like such a specific or thing. Imagine. Yeah, exactly. It's so specific, and she would have recognized her dad at least by his voice. Exactly, too. and it's just I don't know, it's so a creepy thing to say to your kid too. Plus, yeah. like with the whole previous like attacker thing, it's really no. unlikely that it was her husband. Like that doesn't make a lot of sense. Exactly. Like I was thinking about that the other day actually, but um, like her husband, I just feel like it doesn't. It doesn't it, match. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the time that you want to point the finger at the family member or husband or sister or whatever, but in this case, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Did you just say the sister? When has the sister ever been blamed? I listened to an episode the other day on Crime Junkie, I think, where it was the sister who was blamed. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's actually really interesting. I've never heard of a sister be blamed before. I heard of a brother in the John Monet case. True. I fully believe that um, Bert Ramsey, is that what his name is? Burke. 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 Why have I forgotten that? It's been too Burr. much time. Burt. <laughs> I fully believe this is just on the record. Burke Ramsey. He's only Innocent. Guilty. He's only guilty of one thing, and that is being completely Weird. socially awkward and strange. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, literally, like, I saw a TikTok about that case, and it was like, I 100% believe that Burke Ramsey did it. You've done no research then. You've done no research. He was you have like looked nine. up none of the court documents. Like, you have no idea. And I almost went off in the comments, and I really stopped myself. No, you should have. You could have been like... Guys, if you want the truth, go listen to our podcast. Actually, actually no one, don't, no, don't. No one go listen to the first episode of this podcast. Please don't. Like, if you could do anything for yourself, anything for your ears, don't. Yeah. Honestly, I don't even know when our podcast got, like, the way it is now. We've had, like, an evolution. Yeah. Podcast Like, evolution. our first two episodes were kind of, like, co- total shit. Yeah. And then, like, we had these good middle episodes, and then now? Now we're the way things are now. Yeah. Um, we're almost at 30 episodes. This is so weird. It's really weird. It's so weird. How many hours is that? How many hours have we spent working on this? Probably hundreds, honestly. Oh my god. No, it's so weird. Because you know we did this for like a personal project, so like my, I have like an advisor that I had to talk about it with for a while, and mm-hmm. that's like all over and stuff. But like, she was like, yeah, I, I fully believe that you have done like way more than your 25 required hours of work on this. Yeah. Yeah, we really went all out. Some people, like, seriously just made a cake for this project. No, literally. Like, like one single cake. A single cake. Like, that did not take you 25 hours. <laughs> or, like, I, this guy kept posting on, like, the public forum thing, but even though he wasn't supposed to, he was, like, teaching his dog how to walk on a leash. Like, that. On a leash? I think he called it, like, cantering or something. That's but it was literally. Teaching your dog to walk on a leash? Yeah. That's, okay, that's weird. We've gone on so many tangents in this no, episode. No, I'm, I'm like, it's, be, I think it's honestly because we were in like a little bit of a tangent slump, and now it's like, oh. Yeah. Awesome. Well, here's what we do. Okay, so sometimes I'll come over to Izzy's house to record, and then we'll end up talking for like an hour beforehand. Yeah. And today we didn't really talk for that long. We talked for like maybe 20 minutes, and now it's all coming out now. Yeah, so sorry about that. We should really preserve this. I think people like tangents, right? I think they do. I mean, I don't know. Guys, sound off, sound off, sound off on our blog, on our sound Instagram. Off. Yeah, 
tell us what you like in our episodes. Like, truly, we're trying to cater to you guys. Yeah, so, like, if you like the true crime shit and whatever, like, I mean, we're all for that. Yeah. We can do more of that. But if you also like to, if you don't mind listening to us blabber forever, like, listen to, let us know. Yeah, just, <laughs> we're do, we do this for you. I mean, we do yeah. it for us, too, but, like. I'd still make this if no one listened. Yeah, same with terrible. me. No, same with me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, next anyway. theory. Stranger danger. Dun, okay. Dun. So, maybe this is the same stranger that had attacked her years earlier and returned for revenge or to finish the job. Yeah. And maybe he wasn't really a stranger. I mean... But here's the thing. There's just, like, no one that was, like, creepy in her life. True. That we know of. Yeah. But, like, we literally have no idea. I mean, maybe this guy was some sort of, like, weird stalker who was, a, like, obsessed with Dorothy. I mean, maybe I mean, the first case totally was random. Totally like, a stalker. Yeah. Like, maybe the first case was kind of random. Like, he saw her and he was like, ooh. And then he, like, attacked her. But then he followed her for years. Yeah. And that's where her paranoia came in. Maybe she was, like, feeling like she was being watched and people were like, you're batshit crazy. But yeah, in reality, exactly. she was. But, like, maybe that's what she said. Be sure to miss me. Maybe she knew. She had, like, some yeah. weird, like, feeling. Yeah, she had a weird feeling. And I mean, like... Your voice is making us sound so much creepier. I'm so sorry. You yeah. sound no, like I a mean, witch. it's not bad, but you're like... And she may have been kidnapped. <laughs> it's so dark and gloomy. I mean, maybe this explains why nothing was stolen in the first attack. In the first attack or following her disappearance. Yeah. Like, I they think were just sense. after her. I think the stalker like, thing just makes a lot of sense because clearly someone did stalk her. But I think you're right. Maybe someone had been, like, watching her that day and attacked her because they were like, yes, let's. Now is my chance. But then, like, they came back because for years they just watched her and watched her because they became, yeah. like, obsessed with her. Yeah. Like, isn't that creepy? That's so creepy. Duty Man. Duty Man. Oh my god. That would be such a funny name for this episode. Um, <laughs> Duty Man. <laughs> the Duty Man. I feel like nobody would watch, listen to this episode, though. It's called The Duty Man. Why? I would listen to The Duty Man. <laughs> I mean, we've had some very creative names. We have. We have. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. This is the next theory, which is honestly such... I. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Um, but maybe Dorothy was sick of her housewife life and decided to ditch. She was just out. She was just done. But and I doubt it. I totally doubt this. It seems unlikely for multiple reasons. First off, she seemed to have a happy life and family. I like mean, she had was this really like put together except for that whole attack thing. Yeah, and I mean, she was devoted to her children and her husband. I feel like that's not something that like she would do. And I mean, like there were no instances of her running away in the past or talking about leaving her life or really complaining about her life whatsoever. Plus, Marcy like saw this dude. Yeah, like the th- I keep getting going That's back like to not that. something that you make up. And plus, she was nine. She was nine. That's like pretty old. That's old enough to remember that kind of shit. And like, yeah. you don't. I don't know. That's like weird. She wouldn't purposely make that up. I don't think she like imagined it. Like, it would no. be too strange. You know, it's too strange. And then also like. It's not like it was a dream or something, too. You yeah. know what I mean? Because that just... Uh, that doesn't happen. Not it on the same happen. night your mom disappears, it doesn't happen. Exactly. Okay, so our final little thingy here. It's not so much just like a theory, but it's just like really bizarre. And I didn't really know where else to put it. So we're going to talk about it now. I don't know how to describe it. It's just really, really strange, I guess. I don't know. So in 2003, which is like a lot, a lot of years later, like 54, I think, 54 years later. Yeah, a long time later. um, A website writer slash like blogger dude wrote an article about the disappearance of Dorothy Forstein and was later asked, like within the same year, by the Forstein family lawyer to remove the story. And it's reported that several other writers and reporters were also asked to remove pieces on the case. And this all happened around 2003. Like, that for some reason that year, the family just went after quite a few people that wrote Mm -hmm. about it. And they claimed that it was, like, for privacy reasons. But here's the thing. I, like, I can understand wanting a little bit of privacy, but it's been, like, 50 years And I just think it's a little weird that they'd want it removed because having more publicity now might help get the case solved or something. Exactly. And, like, okay, let me mention, this case has, what, four sources? Yeah. That we used? Usually we have about, depending on the case, like, 7 to to 15. Yeah. 
I don't know. It was a little weird, I guess. I just yeah. don't know what to like say. And like, here's the here's like the thing. Like, you want this case solved now? And let's say, let's say Dorothy like isn't even like wasn't even like murdered or something. Let's say she just disappeared. Even if she was living for a while, she wouldn't be alive anymore. And she wouldn't probably wouldn't be alive in 2003. Exactly. Because that would make her like 90 something. She would be really old. Yeah, and so I'm just like curious why. And like Jules, I'm, it can't be Jules that was asking about this. It had to be the children, right? Yeah, or like maybe something just like Set they off? wanted to cover something up. But like, what would the children want to cover up? I don't know. Like, I literally have no idea. What about the children? What about the children? <laughs> I don't know. It's a little weird. I don't really know how to explain it, except for the fact that it's weird. And I don't know what kind of theory that fits into, because I don't think someone in the family did anything wrong, but, like, I don't know, maybe something was up. That's just... And, like, maybe something have... about Marcy's story was off, and they figured out years later, and they didn't want to, like, discredit her. Maybe. But, like, I don't know. I just I thought her story seemed reliable. Yeah, and, I mean, even if it wasn't reliable, she was nine. Yeah. Like, it's not like she was, like... In her teens, making something up for attention or something. She was literally nine. Here's the only weird little thing that I can think of. What if it was Jules that did something to his wife, and Marcy's story was to cover that up? Maybe her father asked her to do that for him. That makes sense. I mean, I think it makes sense. I don't really think it fits with this, like, happy life, but maybe it was just a facade. Yeah. Maybe there's stuff we don't know, especially since this case is so old. It is old. I can't deal with old cases sometimes. Like... This is such a great recommendation because it was a really interesting and bizarre mm-hmm. case, but like old cases are hard. They're tough. hard. There's so not hard as much information. information. Yeah. It's just like a lot of things have been kind of convoluted. So, like. What a good word. Thanks, my vocabulary. <laughs> but like a lot of things have been kind of mishmashed since they've been retold so many times. Yeah. So sometimes cases like this can be kind of hard to retell. Mm hmm. So yeah, this was the unsolved disappearance of Dorothy Forstein. Tune in next week for another interesting case. And in the meantime, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at TGIC.podcast. Bye! Bye!